Today, it's all about master your money goals. Uh, if you're new, I'm Debbie Starr, and I help entrepreneurs just like you put together an awesome signature program or a product so that you can service your people without working 24 seven. And one thing that we have to figure out is how much do we charge? What, uh, what do we want to sell? All of that kind of stuff. And, you know, at the beginning of every year, we usually sit down and try to write some goals and stuff. But, but here's the deal. Most people, whether it's money mindset issues or whatever it is, they struggle coming up with not only the pricing of their products, but they struggle with what is it that they actually want to make in their business. So if you if you were offered a job, you know, a nine to five job, you might not come right out and ask them, but probably the number one burning issue is how much are you going to get paid, right? Because if it's not enough, you're going to say thanks, but no thanks. In your online business, I want you to develop that same mindset. Ask yourself, how much do you want to get paid? And then go after that. And that's what this workshop is going to help us do. We're going to master your money goals and learn how you can diversify your income and elevate your business to new heights. So that is my goal for you today with this workshop. So the agenda, uh, we're going to dip into what is a product ladder. And you're going to quickly see once we use my snazzy little calculator, excuse me, the power of those, uh, of your product ladder. We're also going to talk about identifying the problem slash problems, because once you understand what the problems are of your ideal people, it's easy to build out products based on that. Then we're going to use the snazzy little calculator to plot out your financial goals and then to create your vision. So how does that sound? So let's let's get going. And uh, let me see if I can. I'll remind me in a minute. I will drop it in the comments, the link once we get into the spreadsheet. I don't want you to jump ahead and start playing with it. All right. So let's talk about a product ladder. Now, you might have heard of a product ladder. Uh, if, if you have, put it in the comments. What do you think a product ladder is and why do you think it's so important? A product ladder basically addresses individual problems that your people have. And you're going to see the power of having this product ladder when we use the spreadsheet. A product ladder does not always have to go from very low to very high. You could have things that are similar in price. The key is what are your people struggling with and what's the price for that? So you might have a workshop that uh, you charge $27 for and that is workshop, even though it's low priced, that workshop could become kind of like your star performer or your signature offer in the sense that you drive everybody to that product. You might be running ads and this little $27 product really opens the gate to bring people in. Uh, you might have what we call a signature product that you want to be known for. Okay, so anytime somebody thinks of you, this is what um, you're known for. This might be a high ticket, you know, so this might be uh, a 997. Uh, it might be a, a two, a 2K product, 3K, whatever it is. Um, a signature product does not have to be the highest price. But again, a signature product is what you're known for and maybe the biggest pain point that you help people with. Does that make sense what I'm saying? So again, let me let me know in the comments. When I work with people, the first thing that I do with them is we plot out what their product ladder is because initially they might just have one 
product or maybe two. And when you're first starting out in your business, that's normal, right? Uh, but as the more you work with people, you're going to uncover some other ways that you can help them. Now, normally you will want some kind of a consistent theme running through your product ladder. So um, the example that um, I was using the other day, I'm all about systems and automations and funnels and helping you get leads and clients and kind of baked into my psyche, so to speak, uh, is systems and organization. You know, you, you can't really um, have a, you can't really be a systems geek and analyze all that without kind of loving organization. But if I offered, let's say, a course on um, organizing your garage in a weekend, okay, and maybe I was going to charge $49 for that. I mean, it's a, it would be a great course. It would be a great little workshop for people, but it, it doesn't fit in with my, um, my genre, so to speak, of what I'm offering. So even though that would be a great idea, unless I want to go into the home organization business, it would not make sense to add that to my product ladder. <coughs> so again, let me know if this is making sense. So when we build out the product ladder, we want it to tie in with our main genre um, and it can it can vary in price and based on the transformation that we're delivering and and what it delivers to them helps us define the price. OK, so that's the product ladder. Now, the next thing is how do we identify what to put on our product ladder? Again, is it random? Do we just grab one thing and a, another? What you need to do is to identify what I call the bleeding neck problems, okay? And you'll hear me, I'll just do B-L-N, <laughs> okay? It is hard to write with the mouse. Uh, so a bleeding neck problem, basically what is irritating them so much that they're willing to pay money or they're willing to go on the hunt to look for a solution? All right. So in in my business, the people that I help, uh, you know, one of the, the biggest problems that my potential clients have are getting leads. How in the world can they get leads? And then another problem that they have is, OK, they're generating leads, but how can they turn those leads into clients? Right. And then once they've got some clients, then they start hitting a time window. Uh, you know, you can only serve so many one-to-one -one clients at a time. So then all of a sudden they're realizing they want to scale their business. Uh, but in order to do that, they have to start building all of these back-end pieces of their business. All right. And then once they're really rocking and rolling and they're ready to hire a VA, they're ready to really put the gas on with their business, then all of a sudden they have a like a new set of problems. And I'm going to call it the, the back office organization because now they're in the CEO seat for real and they're having other people uh, do some of this back end work. So as I build out my product ladder up here, I'm addressing some of the problems that people come up or that they have. So with uh, leads here, getting leads, what, what are some of the problems? Well, uh, the first thing is they, they might need help on understanding just the technology, how to build a, a lead magnet. They might need help in identifying how do I know who my uh, perfect clients are and how do I know what that problem is? Okay, so you just go down the line and you come up with different ways to help them solve that problem. And then those can be part of your product ladder. Now, the little curve line here is the idea is as people move through your, um, your funnel, so to speak, or your product ladder, the idea is 
let's say that they sign up for your signature program here. It's a $3,000 program. Um, and by the time they finish, they have, uh, like in, in my instance, they have their all of their business uh, assets built out. They're ready to go. But then there's some auxiliary problems that start cropping up. So remember, I said when they start getting up to the, uh, for my clients, when they start getting up to the scaling and the organizational, uh, there's some other problems that come up. So for instance, maybe they, they're ready to hire a VA. Um, but they don't know where to start, okay? So that's a problem. They need to get it addressed because they can't keep working 20 hours a day. They know that they need to start handing off, but they don't want to make a mistake and hire the wrong people. They don't want to waste hours and hours of time training and then have that person quit, you know, on and on, right? So is that making sense what I'm saying? So as people go up their... Um, ascension with you. Uh, so basically, as it as they're growing in their business, then the problems start changing. Okay. So once once they're to the point that they're making some consistent money, they've got consistent clients coming to them, the types of problems change. So I want you to pay attention to uh, what are some of these auxiliary problems that come up and do you have something that you could help them with? So always be on the lookout. So let me know if that makes sense. Let me just check here, see if there's any uh, comments. Okay, so we'll, we'll keep going. Okay, so uh, and uh, let me give you a completely random um, example of some of these auxiliary problems that come up. And this is in a physical space. Uh, when we get into talking about our dream board here in a few minutes, this will make more sense. But one, one thing that I had on my vision dream board for my financial goals was purchasing, it's like an all-in-one swimming tank, so to speak, and a hot tub. Um, master spa. I don't, I can't remember what the other names are, but it's wonderful. I grew up swimming. I love to swim. Um, and, uh, you know, that was my financial goal. I wanted to pay cash for this thing and I was able to do it last year. So I've really been enjoying swimming, but I was out this morning swimming in it. And one thing that I now use are, uh, earplugs because when I was a kid, I swam all the time. I lived in the water. But as a kid, guess what? I got earaches a lot because water would go down in my ears and it wouldn't come out. It was back before the time when they would put those little things in your ears. Anyway, I'm kind of digressing here. But all of a sudden, I had a new problem. Absolutely love, you know, love swimming. I'm not going to give it up. But the first day that I kind of had that little feeling like, oh, maybe not all the water got out of my ear. Guess what I started doing? I started searching on Amazon for earplugs. Now, that's just a tiny little purchase. Uh, but let me tell you, the problem, bleeding neck problem, I remembered what it felt like to have those uh, earaches as a kid. And I was going to make sure that as an adult, I wasn't going to have it. So can you see how once people start moving down the road, so to speak, and they might be consuming your content or they just might come into your world at a, at a different, uh, you know, maybe you haven't helped them at this point, but they came into your world at this point here, think about what are all of these associated problems that because their life has changed, right? So is that making sense what I'm saying? Okay, good. Uh, let me see. Somebody said, oh, StreamYard link didn't work. Okay. All right. Well, just if you have questions or comments, continue to put them into the, the Facebook and then I, I'll always answer them uh, at the end. Okay. So let's just do a quick recap if you can... Um, if you can tell from all of my scribbles here, the power of a product ladder is uh, one thing that I didn't mention is you can also meet people where they're at. 
Okay. So if you only had one, one product, and again, starting out, maybe you do just start with one product, but as you build out your product ladder based on what problems people are having, and if you can solve them, then there's more opportunities for you to serve those people. All right. So again, let's say, um, let me just get rid of some of this so we can see what I'm uh, doing here. So let, let's say, again, somebody comes into my world, but they come into my world and they're already at this point. They're making good, consistent money, but they know that if they truly want to make big money, they're going to have to get their back end office set up. They're going to have to hire a VA and so forth. And they might not have worked with me individually on these steps, but now they're at this level and they need help. All right. So we just want to look at where they're at, what their problems are, and then can we help them? And as long as it fits in with our genre here, then take a look at if that will um, make sense for you to come up with the product. Now, uh, when you get the handouts and I'll uh, let me see if I can pop this into the comments here. Okay, so I just popped in um, into the Facebook comments a link to this uh, calculator. And, and you'll get copies of the slides and everything else. So let's go and start playing with this. So uh, when, when you go on it, you'll be um, prompted to make a copy. I created this in Excel so you can download it. Uh, as Excel, or you can use it uh, with Google Sheets. So let me talk about how to use this, and most importantly, how it will open up the world to you. The first thing is here in the white, and let me see, can, can you see this, or do we need to make it bigger? Let me just refresh my screen over here. Okay, let me just make this a, just a bit bigger so we don't have to uh, blind ourselves here. Okay, so the first thing is I'm saying only change the values in the boxes to the left that have the dash lines. So only this top area do I want you to change. And then when you change it, you're going to see the magic happen down here. So before I change anything, I want to talk about how this works. We have a good, better, and best column. So what do I mean by that? I want you to start out by plotting like your happiness um, column, okay? Your good column. So you will start putting in some of your products or services and if it's a dream, maybe you haven't even created it yet, just put a placeholder and you could go ahead and put what price you think you want to offer. Okay, so uh, here on this one, it says e-course. So let me just say, um, um, best webinar ever course or something. All right. <laughs> Uh, so you just create your products and then what is the the price that you think would be good to change it or to charge for it? And then number per month, good. So as I'm building out my product ladder, what would I like to see? So I, I have a um, membership group. I'm actually getting ready to start my second membership group. My first one, DBA, uh, Digital Business Academy. That is actually, uh, it's a $49. And how many would I like to get per month? So, you know, if I could get five people per month, that's what I want. Now, I don't want you doing anything with the better and best categories right now. All right. And then let's say I have a paid um, little mini course with $37. How many people am I hoping will sign up for it? Um, again, put whatever number. I do a mind mapping jumpstart session with my uh, with uh, people to help them map out their product ladder, map out uh, what they need to be doing. That's 250. How many of these would I like to do per month? You know, five is good. And then some of my other uh, courses, uh, things like that. So just 
put those numbers in. We're not, we're not going to stress too much. I would like you to stretch a little bit in the sense of um, don't undersell yourself, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So look at what you're offering and, you know, just come up with a realistic price, but not too small. And then you put in how many people you would like to sell to in that month. And then this is where the magic happens down here. In this light green, the, I'm calling it the good level or the starting level. Okay. So as we can see here, my DBA membership for $49, if I sold five this month, then I would make $245 off of that product. If I sold five every month, at the end of three months, I will would have made seven hundred and thirty-five. Now, this the way this calculation is, it's not it's not calculating the reoccurring. Okay, um, I need to do a, a separate calculation for that. Um, let's say my my mini course here again for thirty-seven. If I sold it to ten people, I'd get three hundred seventy dollars over three months, just by selling that one product here, at the end of three months, I would have made $1,100. And the beauty is at the end of the year, just for that one product, if I didn't sell any more, uh, anything else, I would have made $4,400. Okay. Now, let's go back up to these columns. And we're not changing the price, we're changing basically our marketing effort. So if I thought I could get five members a month in my DBA membership, but well, what would happen if I got seven? And then my best, what would happen if I got 10? Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna play with these numbers. And when you play with these numbers, it will automatically update everything, all right? So um, I should have, uh, if we come down here to the better, we can see that instead of five, if we sold seven, all of a sudden it's 343 at the end of the year, 400 or 4,000, $4,100 instead of 29. And in my best category, if I, if I had just 10 people, $5,800. And then when we scroll down all the way to the end, this is the power of your product ladder. Now, let's come back up here. My uh, DBA membership course, just in the good, if I sold five and I sold five every month, okay, you know, it doesn't sound like that much money, right? $245. $2,900 for the whole year. What? That's not very much. But if we look at the rest of my product ladder, and you'll see that my numbers are very minimal. You know, we're, we're not saying, oh, I'm going to have a launch and I, you know, sold out $100,000 or anything like that. These are fairly low priced and low enrollment. But look at the power when you add all of these up. So if we come down to the very bottom, if everything in my product ladder and my uh, estimations sold just in the good, I would make $13,000 a month. Hello, does that, does that sound like a good income for you? At the end of the year, you would make $156,000. If you went with the best, so if you decided, okay, I am going to turn up the heat, I'm going to run ads, I'm really going to have um, uh, focused launches for all of my products here. And again, the numbers aren't that high. Look what happens. You end up with a half a million dollar business at the end of the year. So how exciting is that? Okay, let me know in the comments if this is kind of unlocking things for you. 
So this spreadsheet is geared to help you start mapping out your product ladder and what does that mean for you? At the end of the day, end of the month, end of the year, you are sitting on a gold mine. So you just need to have all the backend pieces and automations and technology ready to go so that you can offer these things. So are you ready? Let's take it one step further. So these are just numbers, right? Numbers. They, there's no emotion involved. How can we now if this if this doesn't get you excited down here to see the possibilities, maybe this will. Let me uh, let me find. Okay, you you will have um, a template, a Canva template that I'll be sharing with you to help you create your financial vision board. Now, we all know what a vision board is, right? You just basically have to put a picture to what it is that you're uh, going after, right? So it's just a very simple vision board. You could make your own if you wanted, but I have a template for you. And on that vision board, I want you to take some time because this workshop is all about your finance to master your financial goals, right? And to do the planning. I want you to take some time. And now these, these pictures are kind of generic until you actually put some details behind it. So this picture here is a woman on a cruise. So I don't want you just to say, yes, I'd, I would love to be able to afford a cruise. I want you to name it and put a date on it. I want to go on, and you might start small, a three-day cruise to the Bahamas, and it leaves out of uh, New Orleans or Miami or wherever it is. The key here is I want these pictures to come alive for you and create a little spreadsheet or um, a document and put the details in it because the more specific you are about your goals, that's, that's when it becomes this reality in your mind. And then you start getting excited. So then when you come back over to your uh, spreadsheet here, I don't know if my screen updates. I think it's just on my end where I have to constantly update it. But then when we come back here to the spreadsheet, then all of a sudden these numbers start taking on a life of their own. And what you should do when you're planning out your vision board is put some money next to these things. Okay, how much is it going to cost you to book that three day or seven day cruise that you want to take your uh, your mate with? Okay, map it out. Okay, I need five thousand dollars for that. Uh, how much is it going to cost you to schedule a, a full one day uh, massage and the whole treatment monthly? OK, do you see where I'm going with this? I want you to be very specific on what this money will bring into your life. It's one thing to say, OK, you know, I made one hundred thousand. My my profit was one hundred thousand in my business. But where is that money going to? If we don't have a place for our money. Now, let me say this. I'm not all into woo woo stuff, but I do feel that whatever we think about subconsciously, that's what we move towards. Okay. So just like my uh, swim spa that I purchased, that vision uh, was very strongly implanted in my heart and mind. That's what I wanted. So as I was making money and working towards that goal, that was that picture that I kept in my mind. So use this financial vision board to help you name it and claim it, basically your goals, because we're working. Yes, maybe we want to leave the nine to five. Maybe we want to retire our hubby or, you know, pay off our student loans, all that kind of stuff. But let's put some juicy uh, tantalizing uh, goals in front of us, and that will help us to move closer. Is that making sense, what I'm saying? So again, uh, let, let me know in the, the comments. Okay, so um, let's, uh, 
let's go back up here just for a minute and let's just talk about the power of your product ladder. So when we went through that, the goal is the more things that you have to offer. Now, let me say this. I'm not suggesting that you create 50 products and you're spending all of your time creating all of the associated stuff to sell those things. But when it makes sense, have some more than one or two items in your product ladder, places where you, people can, where you can meet people at every step of their journey. Okay. That is the key. And then all you need to do is pay attention to the problems. So as people ascend in their business, not necessarily working with you, although most of your clients, once they come into your world, they're going to want more and more from you. But as people ascend into their business, what are the new problems that are cropping up? And can you find something in your product ladder uh, to offer them? And then also pay attention to these associated problems that come up as they work in the business. And then use this calculator. I, I think it's exciting to just put in these little numbers and just do some goal planning and then use the financial vision board. I want you to get very, very specific. So if nothing else today, uh, put in the comments or if you're watching this on replay, I want you to make a public commitment right now because you know the saying is if we don't, commit to something. We never do it. So put in the comments, when are you going to carve out a little time to play with this calculator, to play with the financial vision board, and to actually create that document that maps out all of those things that you're going after. All right. So not to put you on the spot, but I want to put you on the spot. Put in the comments, if you're watching it live or if you watch it on replay, when are you going to map out time? It doesn't have to be a long time, maybe an hour. I want you to start mapping out your financial goals and how you're going to get there. All right. So are you ready to scale your business? The two best ways that I help people, I have, um, it's a it's a 12-month program with the first three months uh, intensive, so to speak, where I coach you every week. It's called the Heart Centered Scale Program. You can get started with that for $250 a month. And I also have my Digital Business Academy. That's $49 a month. And that's where I help you kind of baby steps along the way. You've got the technical assistance and also uh, monthly trainings and workshops and all of that kind of stuff in a group setting. So if you are ready to start scaling your business, then I encourage you to uh, check out e either one of those. So just um, give me a hey in the comments and I'm happy to share the link with you. So I hope this was useful for you. Again, I'm going to hold your feet to the fire. Let me know in the comments, when are you going to do your financial planning? And why don't you share one of your goals with this? I would love to know what tangible thing are you working towards in your business? All right. So that's it for today. Unless there's any questions, let me just double check over here. I don't think I saw any other questions coming through. All right. Great. Well, as always, thanks for watching. Um, if you happen to catch this on my uh, YouTube channel, then I would love it if you uh, gave me a hearts on that and subscribe to the channel. And as always, have a great day and I'll see you next time. Take care.